I have a full dedicated video on both the RTX 4080 and the 7900 XTX. And today I want to talk about if you're in the market for one of these cards, which one should you buy? Think about this video as kind of like a final verdict, if you will. By the way, Happy New Year and welcome to the first video on my channel in 2023. I've given a full detailed discussion on both of these cards. I have covered extensive gaming benchmarks on both cards. And so today I wanna keep it more at a high level. Instead of rehashing all the same data and just putting it against each other, I wanna talk about the cards from a high level perspective, talk about rasterization and ray tracing at a high level, but also talk about the overall benefits, pros and cons of each one of these cards. When you buy one of these cards, you're buying more than just the rasterization performance. You're buying more than just the ray tracing performance. You're buying an overall package. And really, I think the question here is which card gives you the overall better package at the end of the day. I've already talked about pricing on these cards. I'm not gonna waste time going in the pricing on these cards. Basically, it is always a wise decision to just wait and see what the market does. Right now, the pricing is not that great for these cards. There's not a lot of value there. You should wait for pricing to come down. But if you've already decided, hey, I'm okay with the pricing, I can afford it. I just wanna know which card is right for me then this video is definitely for you. And lastly, I'm not gonna get caught up in, well, this company's good and this company's pro-consumer and pro-gamer. Both companies are equally guilty of shady marketing and shady tactics to sell you a graphics card. Point blank, period. We're here to talk about the products that exist on the market today for you to buy and which one overall has the better package. Now, the first thing we have to talk about, obviously, is gaming performance. And so, Right off the bat, here's what I want you to know. From day one, we could see that the 7900 XTX was faster than the 4080. But the problem is, it honestly comes down to the game that you are talking about. For example, if I wanted to make the 7900 XTX look absolutely amazing, then I would show you the Warzone 2 benchmark. Here's my chart of my testing with Warzone 2 on the balance preset. And as you can see at every single resolution, the 7900 XTX is way ahead of the RTX 4080. And I don't have a 4090 to show you, but we also know that the 7900 XTX outperforms the RTX 4090 in this game. But if I wanted to make it look like the 4080 was better overall, I would show you Halo Infinite. And as you can see in Halo Infinite, the 4080 is the clear winner across the board. At 4K, the 4080 brings in 126 FPS, while the 7900 XTX is at 116 FPS, and the 4080 has better 1% lows across the board. And this remains true no matter which resolution you are using. And to add fuel to the fire, Halo Infinite is an AMD optimized title. So not only is the 4080 outperforming the 7900 XTX, it's beating the 7900 XTX on its home turf technically. So it really depends on how you want to look at it. In Overwatch 2, the numbers are significantly closer here. At 1080p, they are neck and neck with 575 FPS for the 4080 and 574 FPS with the 7900 XTX. And technically, the 7900 XTX has better 1% lows at 1080p. And at 1440p, they're also close with 453 FPS on the 7900 XTX and 457 FPS on the RTX 4080. And now the 1% lows are better for the 4080. And at 4K, the 4080 does pull ahead a little bit more where you have 449 FPS against the 7900 XTX's 394 FPS. And the 1% lows are in favor of the 4080. And in Doom Eternal, you can see from a rasterization perspective, not looking at the ray tracing performance, the 7900 XTX is faster than the RTX 4080. But in Spider-Man and rasterization with no ray tracing, the 4080 is the clear winner across the board. And so as you can see, it honestly comes down to the game you want to play. It is not a definite across the board, almost every single game, the 7900 XTX is somehow faster. That is not the reality of the situation. Some games, the 7900 XTX is faster, but some games, the RTX 4080 is faster. The day one reviews, especially from Hardware Unbox, indicated that on average, the 7900 XTX is faster. But since then, Hardware Unbox released a brand new video with over 50 games. I think it was a total of 62 games or 62 game combinations in total. And on average, the 4080 was actually faster by 1% in 1440p, and the 7900 XTX was faster by 1% in 4K. And yes, the overall average is 
did include both ray tracing and rasterization. And so if you're just talking rasterization, that 1% difference would probably be a little bit bigger in favor of the 7900 XTX. But the fact remains, you're not talking about a clear winner here, a clear blowout in my opinion. You're just not. It really does come down to the game you're talking about. And lastly, from a gaming performance perspective, we have to talk about ray tracing. Let's go back to that Doom Eternal benchmark. Yes, the 7900 XTX wins in rasterization, but if you look at the ray tracing performance, the 4080 is way ahead of the 7900 XTX, especially on the 1% lows. And on the Spider-Man benchmark with ray tracing, there's a lot to talk about here, and some of it I'm going to save for later in the video, but just looking at the no upscaling ray tracing performance, you can see that the cards are actually pretty close in terms of overall ray tracing in this title, but technically the 4080 still pulls ahead by a few frames. But now let's take a look at Metro Exodus Enhanced. This game requires you to run ray tracing and it is very demanding. And as you can see on the 4K Extreme preset running the in-game benchmark, the 4080 averages 50 FPS, while the 7900 XTX only averages 39 FPS and on 4K Ultra the 4K is at 76 FPS whereas the 7900 XTX is only at 50 FPS and in both cases the 1% lows of the 4080 almost match the overall average of the 7900 XTX. Now ray tracing is one of those areas where it's not even close. There is no well in this game AMD wins but in this game Nvidia wins and no across the board the 4080 is better at ray tracing than the 7900 XTX. Okay, I've re-recorded this segment like six or seven times already. I'm getting tired of it, so I'm just gonna give it to you. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of each one of these cards, and I'm starting with the 7900 XTX because if you've seen my video on the 7900 XTX, then you know I have a lot of problems with the card, and we're gonna talk about it right now. So first of all, let's talk about the good stuff. On average, yes, AMD is cheaper than Nvidia. The 7900 XTX is about $200 cheaper than the RTX 4080. And yes, technically on average in rasterization, the 7900 XTX is faster than the RTX 4080. And lastly, we all know that AMD will continue to improve their drivers for the 7900 XTX, therefore making the card better over time. Those are the core benefits of going with the 7900 XTX. However, there are some massive issues you have to look out for. And on top of that, every one of those benefits have an exception to the rule. For example, the AIB models of the 7900 XTX do cost more than the reference models of the card. And so now you're, you're getting closer to that actual MSRP of the 4080. And so the whole $200 benefit idea is kind of out the window. And then on top of that, people say it ages like fine wine, well, that is one way of looking at it, but another way of looking at it is they're only giving you the performance that you should have gotten on day one. And we've all seen this movie before, right? It happens all the time in the video game industry. A video game is announced and they promise you the world and then the video game comes out and it's a colossal disaster. It's broken, it's buggy. It doesn't have all the features that it should have had. And then after the course of a few weeks or months or whatever, they finally update the game and they give you what you should have had on day one. That is not aging like fine wine, that is just giving you what they should have gave you on day one on launch. That's the way I choose to see it. Maybe I'm wrong and I'm sure you'll let me know in the comment section down below, but that's the way I choose to see it. And also the 7900 XTX has a really big problem right now. And that is with its overall cooling capabilities and basically a design flaw in the vapor chamber. The Bauer did a really good video on this, doing a full breakdown detailed analysis. And now people are talking about maybe AMD will do some type of RMA process. Yes, I understand. It is only on the reference model cards that we know of right now. That's a pretty big issue because when I bought my 7900 XTX, the reference model card was the the only card available for purchase. It was the only one they had. I had no other options. It was basically buy the reference model or don't get a card at all. Obviously I bought the reference model and I came home and I regretted it. But now let's talk about the 4080 because the 4080 is not perfect either, it's not. But we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of, of that card as well. Obviously the first pro here is that it does have better ray tracing performance. It is just faster in overall ray tracing. Nvidia does have out of the box better driver stability and overall just less driver issues across the board. The 4080 continues the tradition of just being better for productivity and overall content creation across a wide range of different video editing applications. And on the subject of upscaling, the 7900 XTX has access to FSR 
DSLR and FSR only. Meanwhile, the 4080 has access to both FSR and DLSS, and DLSS is considered to be better than FSR in terms of overall image quality. And now the 4080 also has frame generation. And yes, AMD has confirmed they're working on FSR 3 and they are planning to bring their version of frame generation to the market, but it is currently not here and we do not have a set date for when we can expect it. So right now across the board, the 4080 has more upscaling options and better upscaling options all around. And I've tested the frame generation feature. It is awesome. I love it. I think it has great potential and I'm going to do a full video talking about that. So get subscribed so you don't miss it if you want to know more about it. Now hold your horses because the 4080 is not perfect. It definitely has some issues. The first issue is the fact that the overall value is not really where it should be. And so yes, it is more expensive on average when compared to the 7900 XTX. But in addition to that, the card is massive. The card is absolutely massive. And you might not think that the card being massive is a problem, but let me tell you something. I brought the 4080 home and it took me a couple of hours to rearrange my entire system, take my custom loop apart and figure out a way to get this card to fit inside of my case. I do have a smaller case. It is the Lee and Lee Air Mini and today it fits and works totally fine, but it was a pain. It was definitely a hassle to deal with. And so this is a legitimate problem for a lot of people. And lastly, the 4080 has the 12 volt adapter and this thing is absolutely ugly. If you care about aesthetics, if you love the way your PC looks right now, this adapter is absolutely ugly. And so if you're like me, you'll probably spend the extra money and get a custom cable mod cable or something just so you don't have to work with it or look at it or anything like that. And so that is more time and more money out of your pocket. And so that is a point of consideration. And I know a lot of people will say, well, hey, what, what about the adapter catch it on fire. You, you have to mention that, right? So there is the stigma now because that, that was a thing that happened on the 4090, but the reality is that was confirmed to be user error and there were only about 50 documented cases and out of the many thousands of 4090s that have been sold and now 4080s, that, that's not really a lot of cases. And so yeah, it has that stigma. And so maybe that makes you feel a little bit concerned, but that definitely is a con if you decide to go with a 4080. Now, rounding out the video, let me show you one more chart. Going back to Spider-Man Miles Morales, 4K ray tracing. If you look, AMD is only on here for two of the metrics. There are five metrics total. This is a prime example of what you give up when you decide to go with an AMD card. It only has FSR. So your only options here are running ray tracing with no upscaling, or running ray tracing with FSR. Meanwhile, if you go with a 4080, you can run ray tracing, no upscaling, ray tracing FSR, ray tracing with DLSS, ray tracing with frame generation only, ray tracing with DLSS and frame generation. That's right, in case you didn't know, you don't have to enable DLSS if you wanna use frame generation. So that's a nice little benefit. And so I think that chart kind of visualizes a lot of the benefits you give up if you go with a 7900 XTX. And so really it's gonna come down to a couple of things for you. Number one, what is the product availability in your area? Number two, what is the pricing? And number three, how much do you care about ray tracing and exclusive features like DLSS and frame generation? And really that is only up for you to decide. But for me, in my opinion, and in my situation, out of the two cards, my favorite card and my permanent card of choice that is in my personal PC is the RTX 4080. I think overall you get more benefits as an overall package when compared to the 7900 XTX. But that's it for me. Let me know in the comment section down below, which one of these cards do you think is better? And did I miss something in terms of the 7900 XTX? Was I too harsh on it? Let me know. I look forward to talking to you down below. If you're new, get subscribed. If you like the video, please do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. And until next time, E-Rock out.